now for all the European entrepreneurs where venture capital investment is more difficult mm. and business is much more conservative um, and risk averse. Do you have any advice to support them in sourcing funding? Is there no other option than living in the valley? Mm. I just came back from Barcelona where I was a speaker and then a judge of a global competition uh, called HIT. And I was really encouraged by it. It was the second year. And these were entrepreneurs and ventures sourced from all over the world, from Chile, from India, from China, from Germany, from Norway. Um, there was a broad swath of great entrepreneurs that had gone through several levels of competition to get to this final competition of, in, in Barcelona. And I was very impressed with the quality of the people. The quality of the people that I saw starting companies um, around the world through this lens was as good as the best that I saw here in the Valley. Wow. What, I, what was missing in my mind was an environment in which those seeds could take root. Um, I felt almost embarrassed because as I gave them sort of crumbs of, of information insights, they feasted on it. And, uh, and my heart went out to them because you, these are people who had the capacity to do great things mm -hmm. and they were clearly in environments where they weren't able to find the resources, the guidance, the mentoring, um, the, and, and the talent they would, that they would need to take their businesses to market. Some I hope will, will succeed. Some were willing to transplant themselves to the United States to be in that environment. The truth is that innovation is distributed around the planet wherever there are smart people, and that's everywhere. Innovation is just part of the creative, um, the creative drive, the human condition to solve problems and create. And there's no significant advantage to, to having grown up here in Silicon Valley versus growing up in Bhutan to be able to solve great problems. Hmm. The advantage is as follows. Entrepreneur, while innovation may be evenly spread and distributed around the world, entrepreneurship is a profession. Entrepreneurship has a best practice. And the best practice of entrepreneurship on the planet today remains in Silicon Valley. That's not to say that there aren't great practice areas around the world. There are. And that's not to say that Silicon Valley will be the best practice of entrepreneurship 10 years from now. It may not. But it took 70 years for Silicon Valley to create a culture of risk taking, to create an environment of resources and investment, and more importantly, to create a, um, a, an expectation that great minds would invest in great minds, not just money in great minds, but their minds in great minds to help create the next new thing. That's something that I find missing in other cultures. When I talk to my European counterparts, or particularly to the European entrepreneurs, they tell me two things. They tell me that if they try and fail in Europe, it's a personal failure, not just a business failure. That's not the case in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, if that was the case, we would have far fewer risk takers and far few, fewer entrepreneurs uh, than we have today. Business failures are business failures, and if you fail for the right reasons, which is pretty much any reason other than being corrupt, stupid, or lazy, then, then you have an education. Then you're more valuable. The other thing the, entrepreneur, the entrepreneurs in Europe tell me is, when somebody is successful in, in, in uh, Europe, an entrepreneur has a big win, they disappear from the scene. They retire, they buy a yacht, they do whatever they're going to do, but they don't do what happens here in Silicon Valley reinvest themselves in next generation. And until you have generation upon generation reinvesting themselves in the success, the guidance, the, 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 the mentoring of the next generation, then you don't have a real flywheel mechanism in your entrepreneurial culture. Thank you. Um, and this is very valid then um, to your experience in Barcelona. Um, how do you feel about all the groups and competitions for funding for startups that are on the rise? In January, I won a spot on the Funded.com showcase and flew in from London the day before. It was an amazing opportunity and a great networking time. Astia also runs tra trainings for women entrepreneurs, which facilitate network opportunities with venture capitalists. Um, obviously, they charge for that. <laughs> 
but um, do you think these group facilitated opportunities help or hinder the process for startups? And there's one point that I note, um, because I'm a matchmaker, I still l lament there's no matching facilities mm. with mm. these groups, mm. matching VCs with startups. Mm. Um, and I did suggest to Adeo Resi that I would help set that up on thefunder.com, but to date they've not been interested enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting idea. The, the, in terms of the competitions, and I think the corollary, which is those are the incubations that are going on, these incubators that have been created around the world, I'm of two minds. Um, to the extent that the competition doesn't bring together the right ecosystem, of investors, of, of talent to help make these companies successful, um, and of great entrepreneurs, to the extent that it's really just a sort of amateur showcase, then I don't think it serves anybody's interest and it builds the wrong expectations. People come there expecting that they're going to be exposed to the people that can help them build their businesses. And if if you don't serve that real matchmaking function yeah. in bringing together the right people to be part of that competition, like they were in Barcelona, and I was very impressed with the quality mm -hmm. of people in Barcelona, mm -hmm. then I think you're doing a disservice to both groups. That's number one. Number two on incubations. Uh, in, in a place like Silicon Valley, I think incubators have a limitation in the sense that incubators keep the, the, the entrepreneurial world and culture out rather than in. Because Silicon Valley is, a, is one big incubator in and of itself. It has the right environment and the right reinforcing values to take good ideas and good entrepreneurs and raise them up. If you build an incubator, all you're doing is insulating yourself from those natural tides in this, in, in this culture. On the other hand, if you're in a culture where uh, that is not as friendly to entrepreneurship, where you need to protect your fledgling organizations and provide them with care and feeding to get them strong enough to enter into the business culture, then I think an incubator is a useful tool. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> oh, it was a great, great pleasure. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking with you.